versus future. Well, a good fighting prospect here tonight. It's Gary Logan against a character called O.J. Abrahams. I spoke to both boxers earlier. Gary Logan, um, well, he's been around for six years and uh, he's been Southern Area Champion for three years. Now, I've been a pro just three years, just gone. I made my debut on the Eubanks uh, ill fated re uh, rematch with Michael Watson and Chris Eubanks. And I can't understand what Gary Logan is uh, still doing around these days, you know, just as a Southern Area. Look, I'm very ambitious. After three years, I'm now rated at number three in the country after caning two top ten fighters. And um, I don't feel that Gary Logan's got anything more to prove tonight. And as you will see, I will uh, do the job tonight and cane him. Well, basically, after nine months, you don't want to come back and fight the best, you know. And I want to prove to OJ that I've got to put him in his place. He's got a lot of mouth. And as the great Salvador Sanchez said, the actions speak louder than words. Seriously, how do you rate him and how do you see the fight going? OJ is very tough. He'll be very tough for the first four rounds. And um, I don't anticipate la letting him land or getting any momentum going in the first four rounds. I'll just be boxing him and then take him apart later on in the fight. Well, um, I've got punching power in either hand. Um, I won't look for a, pun uh, a knockout, but um, one slip and he will pay the price. Uh, when I see daylight, I go for it. For two months now, I've been trained for this fight, and twice a day, every day, I take two deep breaths through my nose. I can smell the title. Time now to go ringside and join Harry Mullen and John Rawley. Dave Paris, the referee, draws the two men together. On your right, O.J. Abrahams from Watford, challenger for the Southern Area welterweight title. And on the left, Gary Logan from Croydon. This, an eliminator for Del Bryan's British title. This could turn out to be a cracking contest. Logan with a little bit of a puncher's reputation, certainly in the early stage of his career. That career, though, came a little bit derailed back in February when he lost a bruising contest against Graham Chaney in a challenge for the WBC international title. Abrams, in contrast, had a remarkable victory over Darren Dyer. Abrams, 29 years old, four years the senior, in his 17th professional fight, Logan in his 29th pro fight. I think we can look for Abrams to, uh, to make a fast start here. He'll try and duplicate the um, superb result he had with Darren Dyer. Abrams actually made his professional debut back on that uh, ill-fated Eubank Watson show in September 1991 and actually went along to Barry Hearn, the promoter on that occasion, and said, employ me, get me on your show, I can sell tickets. And he did precisely that, and not only that, he emerged from his opening contest as a winner, and Dave Paris won't like that very much. I remember seeing Logan's first defeat at the Albert Hall in 1989, a controversial one. And a good start for Abrams. Very, very fast start by both men. Yeah, they're both, both landing very solidly, very hard punches. It's, um, it's questionable whether this will go turn around, really, with the, the weight of punches they're both connecting with him. Oh, a good punch from Logan. And Abrams felt that one. Logan's first pro defeat came on points against Chris Blake. His manager on that occasion, Mickey Duff, I think, his memory serves me, protested long and hard, but he had to accept it, and then maintained an unbeaten record until that last fight, when it really was something of a step up in class, beaten by Graham Chaney. It's a bit of a test of character for Logan, really, tonight, to see how he comes back from that bad defeat. He certainly hasn't picked an easy one to come back with, either. Logan, who boxed as an amateur, Fitzroy Lodge and also for Repton. Looks older than his 25 years. Promise to be an excellent contest for you here on Wire TV. From Bethnal Green in the east end of London. The York Hall, one of boxing's traditional hotbeds at Ferber, and tonight no exception. <laughs> Tight opening round this one, not too much between them. Now giving it to Logan, I think he did just the cleaner work and uh, had that particularly good spell in the middle of the round. He did hurt Abrams at the right hand. Well, I have to agree with you, first round over.
and Gary Logan, the champion, probably doing just about enough to take it. Gary Logan, 29th professional fight, 26 wins, 2 defeats, 14 of those victories by KO, and 26 years old in two weeks' time. O.J. Abrams, 29 years old from Watford, in his 17th professional fight, more of a mixed record, nine victories, five defeats, two draws, five KOs, but a very much improved fighter, and that last victory came against Darren Dyer, one of the danger men of the division. There's a good Logan right hand in that first round. There it is. Take us out, round two. We thought this was going to turn out to be a fascinating contest, and all the indications are that it will be precisely that. We shouldn't be misled, I think, by the statistics on Abram's record. Uh, certainly he has got uh, almost as many defeats as victories, but so does Steve Robinson at the same stage of his career, and uh, he's now world champion. Some fighters just take time to settle in the pro game and to learn their business, and Abram's, I think, is a good illustration of that. Of course, in years gone by, that was very much more the norm. You'd see fighters having learning fights and maybe taking defeats early in their career. The uh, conception of uh, the concept, rather, of making a, or keeping and preserving an unbeaten record is uh, a relatively modern phenomenon. Well, uh, at the risk of shooting ourselves in the foot, I think television is uh, responsible for that change in attitude. Um, TV uh, companies do like unbeaten fighters. It makes them easier to sell. Well, O.J. Abrams. Still could gate crash. The top flight if you were to win tonight. Del Bryan, the British champion, due to fight the European champion, Gary Jacobs. Confident start though from Logan. Yeah, he's confident, but uh, he's respectful of Abram's power. I think he, he's had a couple of tests of it and he knows that he's in with a hard hitting, dangerous guy. He's Logan. giving him plenty of respect and watching a sensible, cagey fight. Logan's the taller man. Has the reach advantage and will obviously try to capitalise on that, but just arguably, Abrams might be the harder puncher. I think he probably is the harder one hit, one punch hitter, certainly. So Logan's had some spectacular knockouts himself. I mean, I remember in the amateurs knocking out Kevin Lushing, who's now a very good and highly first round job, that, wasn't in the first it? round in the Olympic finals, I believe. So he's got plenty of one-hit power as well. I suppose having had that defeat and coming back from a defeat, clearly the first round or two for Logan are going to be a little bit anxious. A little bit of a confidence rebuilding operation. Well, he's got to settle into the fight and he's doing that nicely now. He's not taking risks, he's boxing coolly. And, uh, he's, he's, I think he's, he's feels possibly that he's got the measure of Abrams. He's finding him easily with jabs here now. Abrams has got to do something to get inside that jab at the moment. It was a good jab though from Abrams as I spoke. But at the moment, Logan on boxing skills looks as though he has the edge. The referee, of course, is the man who has authority to score this fight. Ten rounds it's scheduled for. And it promises to be a very fascinating contest as it unfolds, Harry. I think uh, it's interesting to watch Logan's tactics here. He uh, went in to, to have a, a little bit of a punch-up with Abrams in the first round, but uh, has opted to box his way through the second and showed a very nice left jab. There is Logan. Mick Williamson, the cuts man, just uh, dabbing the brow. We talked about Logan having fast hands and a good left jab, but look at that from Abrams. Nothing wrong with that one. And almost followed it up with a very meaty looking right cross as well. Abrams is one of the great characters of British boxing in his corner. Howard Rainey, Colin McMillan's trainer. Take us out, round three. I've got Logan edging it so far. 
Logan in the black and white shorts. Abrams in the black shorts with the red tip. Up your work rates, Gary, the corner in floor. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with his work rate. He's, he's scoring quite freely with his job. Uh, they don't see any point in them taking risks just for the sake of doing so. Abrams having a little bit of success of his own with that jab, and there was a good little right cross as well which caught Logan, and Logan wanted to just hold on and buy a little he, bit of time. He was very glad to hold on from that. He's caught him a little high in the head, I felt, but it, he did feel it, and was a little stunned by it. Abrams will have taken some encouragement by that. That was a good little cross. concerned to land just about flush on O.J. Abrams. Abrams didn't blink. This is a hard man. Midway stage of round three. A good round for Abrams so far. Probably the best that he's, he's had since the night. Good body punch too. He's looking really felt that. The power is with O.J. Abrams. No question. Both of them, I might say as well, look superbly conditioned. Abrams in, in particular, that physique really does look hard, doesn't it? Good right from Logan. They both know that they've got a, a long, hard night's work. Uh, they, they, they have to be in condition. That sick little smile from Logan when he took that right hand. How do fighters do this? I mean, everybody knows that the, a fighter grins just because he's been hurt. Kidology. They always know, though, don't they? Well, kidology is fine if it works, but it never does, does it? Well, closing stage of the third. Now, I reckon that O.J. Abrams has done enough to win this one. So maybe Logan took the first two. Close round again, but I'd score that to Abrams. Good round for Abrams. That he made it, uh, Logan box on his terms in that round. Uh, in the second, it was all Logan's job, but now um, Abrams is making him stand and fight, and he's scoring effectively. He's a tough man, isn't he? A hard fighter. Real extrovert character as well. Certainly talks a good fight. Well, he's delivering one too tonight. See the final flurry of punches in that round. Logan came back and started it with a good right, but Abrahams, he just didn't, he didn't take a backward step, did he? No, he just gritted his teeth and came straight back in. Very determined fighter. It's a wonderful opportunity for him. There's some wise heads in that corner. Oh, experienced corner indeed. Huh? Jimmy Tibbs on corner. the far side, of course, the man who looks after the career nowadays of Nigel Benn. Second out, round four. Fourth round, scheduled to go 10. Excellent bout for you here on wire television. <laughs> Logan's picking him off with that jab, but he's not backing him up in any sense, is he? He's not hurting him with it. He's just uh, outpointing him with it, but... Uh, he isn't really uh, stopping his advance with it, is he? Abram seems quite, quite happy to take those jobs. As long as he can get close enough to land his own big punches. Of course, a lot at stake here tonight. Whoever wins this fight could well go on to fight either Del Bryan or maybe even Gary Jacobs who are the stars of this division in the British, in British terms, at any rate. <laughs> A 
Jacob um, stalking his man, trying to unload the, his heavier punch power. Shortly short on the right hand. Uh, Can't really blame Logan for holding on like that when you're as close as that to a hard hitter. We know Logan is a gutsy fighter. He's been on the ball several times, but he's got up and won fights from that sort of position as well, beating people like Trevor Ambrose. He's scoring with that jab. But is he hurting Abraham tonight? How much is that going to be a factor the further the fight goes? Surely that shot was probably low, and Abraham was not at all happy. I think it was on the blind side of the referee. And he was lucky to get away without a caution there. It does get a ticking off twice in this round. Logan strayed well beneath the belt. Well, fourth round. I think I'd probably just about edge that one to Gary Logan. Yeah, I thought he won it with his left jab. It's uh, a nice punch. He's a well balanced boxer. Um, always looks in control of himself and looks composed even whenever Abrams comes back at him. Impressive boxing, but as you say, the punches aren't really hurting Abrams. They're not stopping them coming forward. They're just outpointing him. At one stage, it really did look as though Gary Logan was going to emerge to become a bit of a star of British boxing. There's uh, Howard Rainey, one of the world's great Sheffield United fans, chatting to his charge, O.J. Abrahams. Always looks as though he's the sort of man you'd want on your side in a bit of a tight situation. Good jabs from Gary Logan there. And that was what that was what was edging in that round, I think, Harry. He's used the jab very well. Second out, round five. Fifth, fifth of ten, this for the British Southern Area welterweight title. And Gary Logan looks in control at the moment. The taller man from, Cro from Croydon in the black and white shorts. I think so far it's following pretty much the pattern we expected with Logan outboxing him, but Abraham is still very much in the fight and still very dangerous and always looking for that one big punch. And we do know that we do know that Logan that Logan can be caught. Oh dear. the impression that this is a key phase of the fight if Abrahams can just get in there and land some really meaty shots you just wonder if Logan's resolve might possibly crumble just a little bit at the moment Logan's by and large getting this his own way he's allowed, his boxing skills are prevailing and Tom Bracey we have to uh, wonder whether Abrahams can uh, sustain the effort if Ron got to run for five good shot, good shot from Logan Abrams sprung to his feet in little more than two seconds there. Yeah, that was a punch from nowhere. You'd have thought that uh, you'd have thought he might have been well advised to have stayed down and taken a longer count. There's a minute to go in this round, so he's got plenty of time to finish this. If he can catch him again. The old pros would have stayed down. It might have been a flash knockdown, but he was up so very, very quickly, and you wonder whether that was wise.
was a shot from nowhere. It was that left hand from Logan. But Abrams, give him credit, he's come back well. Oh, here comes Logan again. These are anxious times for O.J. Abrams. Oh, good shot! Logan did well to stay on his feet there. Right at the end of the round, Abrams almost responded by putting Logan down, and Logan did tremendously well to stay on his feet. Well, certainly an eventful round, wasn't it? First had that knockdown punch that came from absolutely nowhere. And it, it, here it comes. Let's see the knockdown. There it was. Oh, what a perfect punch. Cracking punch. Abrams sprung straight up. And then at the end of the round, though, look at that. And Logan walked right onto a peach of a right-hander. And he did very, very well indeed to stay on his feet. Perhaps it's as well as the bell rang when it did then. Despite that, though, you have to score that round in Logan's favour. Oh, it was a big round for Logan, no question. But Abram showed us in the last couple of seconds that he's still there. And that he still can't hurt Logan. This fight is over by a long way. Round six. Sixth round, we're into the second half of this British Southern Area welterweight title fight. Gary Logan is in control, he's well ahead, but O.J. Abrahams, as we saw at the end of the fifth, still a very dangerous man indeed. Now, we always joined us on our commentary position then, and uh, the referee doesn't like that too much. I thought you showed good reactions there, Harry, fading away from that one. It's quicker to get out of the way than uh, OJ was in the last OJ still fences this, you know. Well, he had the last word in that round. He, he hurt Logan badly, so he knows he can, if he gets the chance, that uh, he can take it. He can hurt Logan. I've got Logan a street ahead on points. That, well, might just, that might not matter one iota. No, that's, that, that's what we expected to happen. We expected Logan to outbox him. Uh, the interest in the fight is whether Abrams at some point in the 10 rounds can land that big punch. We know Abrams can punch. Finished off Darren Dyer in style. End of the career of Errol McDonald. Right. And if you were to inflict a bad defeat on Gary Logan here tonight, you really begin to wonder a little bit what the future would have in, in store for Gary Logan. Well, there wouldn't really be anywhere for Gary Logan to go if he was to lose to Abrams. Logan's got to get to work on that jab again. He's got to keep, he's got to keep uh, Abrams off, because at the moment he really is inviting Abrams to go to work with those swinging rights. His work rate's dropped, and he's not making Abrams back off as he was earlier on. Also looks a little puffy around the left eye, too. Gary Logan. I'm sure that must be a legacy of that tremendous right at the end of the last round. So that's a shot. And there's the jab at long last. bad run for Abrams up to now. Uh, Logan hasn't been able to make the job work as effectively as it was earlier. It's only a whisker away from being a real danger punch. This isn't a particularly good round for Gary Logan. Had his man down in the fifth. Good body shot there as I spoke.
Seventh round, we've still got Logan ahead on points. But Abraham's coming back in that last round and coming back strongly. I have Logan three rounds ahead at the moment. But Abraham really fancies this. And coming on strong. He wants to make a brawl of it. Surprisingly, perhaps, the work rate is starting to drop a little bit. And Logan turned virtually nothing inside here. And questionably works far, far better when he's moving and jabbing, and I'm sure Abrams is only too well aware from, of that. He's trying to wear his man down. Well, Abrams is never happier than when he's got uh, his man against the ropes or in the corner where Logan can't use the mobility or the jab. Remember, there was that knockdown in the fifth round. Gary Logan had O.J. Abrams down. It was a bit of a flash knockdown. Abrams came back very, very strongly and almost knocked Logan down himself with that overhand right, which you saw again there. Logan increasingly is having to fight Abrams kind of fight. So I wonder whether it's a mistake or by Abrams, just his pure physical strength might be starting to assert itself there. I do wonder. Logan started this round quite snappily. He was working well and moving well, but the further it's gone, the more Abrams has come into it. Good left, but Abrams took it well. Not so well this time. Abrams complains to the referee, suggests that Logan tried to push him to the floor. And has a little word with uh, the Logan corner as well. The good right from Logan and Abrams now is undoubtedly rocked in there. Could turn out to be a watershed round this one. Just when it looked as though it was going OJ Abrams' way, back came Logan, and he came back in a big way. Well, that's the sign of a good fighter who can uh, produce punches of that quality at a, a crucial moment in a tight round in a difficult fight. As it I was said, physical it strength, wasn't it? But then Logan dug deep, and he found that big right. And Abrahams really did have a very, very wobbly moment over on the far side of the ring. Abrahams was well on top, though, in the earlier stages of the round. This is the kind of fight Abrams loves, his close-range work where he can make his punches tell. That's his sort of fight. But then, as we say, oh, no. it all began to change a little bit. And Gary Logan now has got three rounds to go. And I suspect that if he can go through and keep this man off, he's going to emerge as the winner. Sustained spell of pressure for O.J. Abrams. Logan never really comes back with anything in those, uh, those spells where he's, he's pinned against the ropes. He's not very good as an inside fighter. Oh, oh no, no, that was... It's the third time, and that was very low. Oh. That's the third time that Logan has strayed well into the danger area. 
And really, you'd, you'd think that Dave Paris has got to say something to Logan Shawley. And he's giving him every chance to recover, giving him plenty of time, telling him to breathe up. Well, now, what's he going to say? He says, keep the punches up. But there's no formal warning there. It would have been a shame to have ended the fight like that in a disqualification. But uh, I'm sure uh, Paris will have take that low blow into account when he does his, uh, his scoring at the end of the round. Because there is no public warning as such in British boxing where uh, there are no judges to be told to deduct a point. But I'm sure Paris will penalise Logan when he does his total at the end of this round. I'm not sure getting your breath back is quite the phrase, but uh, whatever it is that uh, OJ's got back, it's certainly uh, going back there and fighting with a vengeance now. Big round this to Abrams. Logan's done nothing, Harry. Nothing at all, no. Just leaning on those ropes. That is that another low one. He's living dangerously. He's living very dangerously with those body punches. That may not have been. It may have been just on the borderline, but it was very, very close oh, indeed. It was borderline, I think. He just about got away with it. But if he was to land one more low blow, then I think there would have to be disqualification. Logan's going to be a great thing. Really going for the solar plexus with those body shots. Abraham's forced to back up for almost the first time in the fight. Anxious times for OJ now. He's still suffering from those body shots. I don't know really the body shot he's suffering from. Blows. It's the, the ones that landed a little uh, oh, south of the border. He's almost doubled over there in pain. He winced as he went back to the corner as well. Howard Rainey almost assaulting him in the corner, as much as to say, come on, you've still got a chance here in this fight. OJ well in control in the early stages. He Logan does nothing inside, does he? he doesn't no. It, uh, doesn't seem to know what to do. Well, he only to came back when uh, roll on the ropes. he only came back with that low blow. It was only after that that he got back it that he got back into the round. Uh, Ab Abrams did well to recover from that low blow. A lot of fighters would have stayed on the floor and claimed a disqualification there. Well, OJ Abrams has actually never been beyond six rounds before, so he's in. Unknown territory now. Let's take a look again at this low blow. Well, no question. That's second that round blow to me. Round yeah. nine. I think uh, OJ Abrams is not the kind of fighter to pretend to be hurt if, if that hadn't been genuinely low. I think Gary Logan might look back on this fight and consider himself as a little bit fortunate in some ways. Good fast start though from Logan. Doubling up well on the hooks. Logan surely well ahead on points. He established his dominance in the early stages of the fight. Although we do see some strange verdicts. Well, there's, a, there's a new element in this fight as well with that uh, low blow of Logan's because if he were to do it again, referee would have to disqualify him. So he's really walking a knife edge at this point. And in his position, I think I would be happy to just to work behind the jug and forget about the body punches. I've got Logan two rounds ahead still. Oh, uh, good shot. Another good body shot. And that one, I'm sure, was legitimate.
interesting, you know, just when we were criticising Logan for going to work, or for failing to work, behind that jab. Okay, there have been, as you say, a couple which have been south of the border, but the real damaging shots have been, have been those body shots. It's been very much uh, Logan's round so far. First time really in the fight that everyone seems to be flagging now. I don't think he, he may have fully got over that low blow in the last round. Seemed to take a lot of the steam out of him. Well, you always shy away from saying that one particular moment broke a fighter's heart or his resolve, but certainly O.J. Abrahams hasn't been the same fighter since. Another big body shot from Logan, getting roars of acclaim from the crowd. He does look a weary fighter now, doesn't he? He does, he looks very tired indeed, Abrams. All things considered though, Logan could be reasonably pleased with his rehabilitation, coming back off a bad defeat here tonight. Well, he got a ticky off once for the head, and now he's getting a ticky off again. So we've had Logan worn for low blows. Abrams used a uh, worn for use of the head. Yep. Certainly given a, a severe talking to. So both of them having had the yellow card now. <laughs> uh, big round to Logan. A little bit of bad feeling. <laughs> a little bit of blood on the left cheek of Abrams. Nothing too serious, I don't think. It was the body shots, though, which took that round emphatically for Gary Logan. Here's an example. There we go, oh, thudding in. Right into the bit of the Thudding in. Right into the breadbasket. So, just one round to go. And Gary Logan, well, it looks to me as though he's heading towards an emphatic win. I've got him three rounds ahead. Abrams got ticked off for use of the head, or oh, well, there you see, he really did pull those in with his head and got the ticking off, and then blow me if he didn't do it again. Last round, it's been a tough old fight, this one. Abrams has got nothing to lose now. He has to go all out because he's so far behind on points that his only chance is to knock Logan out. He's got to, to dredge up one last effort here. and uh, It looks at the moment as if it's beyond him, frankly. Desperation stuff, Harry. I don't see that he's going to get it. Logan's still talking away in the clinches. see some fights, some fighters who seem to em emerge from the most bruising and acrimonious of contests as the best of friends. I wonder whether this might not be one of them. I'm sure it will. It's only business after all. Right. A very tough one as well. Mm, another couple of savage body blows. Three of them all going in from Logan and all heavy scoring punches. Even though he's uh, almost certainly lost this, I think Abrams comes out with his reputation enhanced, really. It's he's his a first tough fighter. It's his first time over 10 rounds, and uh, he's done very well and shown that he belongs in this level of competition. Well, next up, it could well be a British title fight for the winner. Dave Paris is the man who will have responsibility for totting up the scores. Excellent fight. I hope you've enjoyed watching it with us here on Wire TV. Again, it's the body shot from Logan. <laughs> 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 
Oh, it's a nice little sporting touch from Logan. He went bulldoze again, and uh, I could think of one or two fighters who might have looked to capitalize on that. A lot of fighters have taken advantage there, I think, but uh, they showed his best as a touch of sportsmanship and good spirit, I think. Uh, at least the humor's still there. I suppose when you've got a nice points lead behind you, you can afford to play the nice guy, can't you? Turning on a bit of an exhibition now. I'm going to have Logan a couple of points clear in this one. And he can be very satisfied with this comeback. Yeah, remember what remember what Abraham's did in his last outing, and that puts this into context. Nailed Darren Dyer. Well, that's not a knockdown, that's a slip. And there we are, the fight over. And Gary Logan's emerged as the winner. Quite rightly so. He had to dig pretty deep at one stage, but he had his man down in the fifth round. And in the end, it was the body shots which told warnings for both fighters but Gary Logan has emerged as a very clear winner and well he might celebrate ladies and gentlemen on the 10 very hard rounds of boxing the referee scores a contest Gary Logan uh, OJ Abraham's 96 and a half points Gary Logan 99 and a half points the winner and undefeated world away champion of the southern area Gary Shogun Logan. So Gary Logan wins this British Southern Area welterweight title fight a little bit wider on and the referee scorecard than we had it, but he's still the, the champion the and now area. could well be heading towards a British title fight as well. Well, Gary, we wondered, and I bet you wondered, how you were going to be after the Cheney fight. Well, you give us your verdict. It looked a good one to us. Yeah, definitely, Mike. Um, I prepared well for it. I had a good long rest, just played lots of football during the summer, got the legs nice and strong, and I came back. And um, it, I would have liked to have stopped OJ, but then again, I've never, ever done 10 rounds. The only time I've done 10 rounds is when Cheney licked me. And um, I want to prove to everyone that I can do 10 rounds well, which I think I did because I did it on my legs all the way through. OJ is a character, but it looks as if you were trying to bend him in two at one point. Definitely, definitely. From the minute, he, um, the minute I saw the size of him, I said he, he must struggle to do the weight. And I just thought the body shots, the, eye, the, the body has no eyes, you know, it can't see him, you know, and he was Sorry, really hurting. Mechanic. But respect to him, you know, he's my idol, Mike McCullum. And I came through just like Mike did, but respect to OJ, he took them shots well. I don't think he's going to stick around. Okay, right. you're back in business, British title next, that's what you hope, yeah? Hopefully, yeah, you know, I don't mind another 10 rounder just to get him under my belt because I've had nearly 30 fights now and that's the first, only the second time I've done 10 rounds. So it wouldn't hurt to get another 10 rounder in, you know? One thing's for sure, you don't need a shower. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I've even got Cheers, Gary, and congratulations. Thank you.